Hello, happy December! It is officially December 1st. I opened my advent calendars this morning. I have a picture one that my mum bought me and I bought myself a dairy milk one because you can't go wrong with a good dairy milk calendar. If you have an advent calendar, let me know in the comments which one you have. I love this time of year. December is such a lovely month. I just feel very happy and jolly throughout a lot of this month. It's not always an easy month, and I know it's not always an easy time of year for everybody, but I am trying to pull out every moment of joy that I can and just have fun feeling festive, reading all the festive books, watching all the festive films, going out on Christmas days out, and just building up to having a nice bit of time off work, because whilst I do take time off work throughout the year, any time I take time off of my day job, I'm still doing freelance work when I'm off. Whereas the Christmas break, I give myself a proper break from everything. I make sure everything is scheduled. I'm still posting on Instagram and things, but I'm not making any videos. I'm not doing any freelance work. Everything is sorted. So I'm very excited for that break as well. So this is the first vlog of Christmas. I am not doing Vlogmas this year. I did a variation of Vlogmas last year where I did a video every other day. I just don't have the capacity to do that and I don't want to feel like what I'm producing isn't as high quality as I could make it because I'm trying to rush myself to get it out because I just don't have enough time. I work three jobs, this being one of them anyway, but it is it is a lot and I do not have the capacity unfortunately to be able to do it. I wish I could because I adore watching Vlogmas content, but I feel like my best bet instead is to try and make some really good dedicated Christmassy videos that I hope you guys enjoy. So today I am going to be reading, or well this week I'm going to be reading Gifts by Laura Barnett. This is a contemporary book following multiple different people trying to buy Christmas gifts for their loved ones and how these stories all knit together. I'm right at the start of this book, I am not very far in at all, 20 or 30 pages in, and I'm not loving it at the moment, I'm finding it a little bit all over the place. Currently we've been introduced to quite a few characters and I'm not yet familiar with who is who and who is married to who as well, so I'm a bit confused, but hopefully that will slow into place for me soon. So that is my current read. I'm going to be doing a couple of festive things in this vlog. There will be a trip to London that I'm really excited about, so hopefully we'll be able to go and do some Christmassy activities in London. I'm going with Jade from Jade Blue Reads, so that'll be really good fun. Generally, I just want to make sure that all of my content throughout all of December is festive fun, giving you all the Christmassy vibes, so there's some good stuff coming your way. But a little intro to this vlog, I hope you enjoy watching. I'm interrupting past Beth here to tell you about the sponsor for today's video, Serious Readers. I have obviously spoken about Serious Readers a lot in recent videos and that is because I absolutely love this brand and really believe that these lights are just absolutely fantastic. I have been sent the high definition floor light and I've been using this for quite a few months now. I've been using it when I've decorated for Christmas, so rearranging my room a little bit and it still fits into my Christmassy decor. I have been using it when reading, I've been using it when crafting. It is fantastic. I've mentioned before that I like my room with fairy lights and this light is able to cut through other light sources in my room and be able to be my main source of light while still maintaining a very very cozy atmosphere and I love it for that. It just fits really well into my room. I love the fact that it has an adjustable beam, it has adjustable brightness. There you go, adjustable beam and you can adjust the brightness. It's so useful because it means you can basically fit it to whatever need you have for this light. Also, this is the perfect spot for it because I always sit here and read, but also what I have been using it for, as I mentioned, I said I've been using it for crafting. So I've been making my own wrapping paper at the moment, which <laughs> might be a mistake, but basically I've been decorating it myself with stamps and wax seals. And that is taking me a long time and is definitely taking me into the evening when it gets very, very dark out. Now, what I didn't realize was how much of a difference this light would make when I was doing that. So I started doing it without the light when it was fairly light outside still. And as it got darker, I turned the light on and realized how much of a difference it made to being able to see the little details of what I was doing. And wow, okay, it definitely, definitely had a difference. And it definitely helped me be able to see a lot clearer without feeling like I was straining my eyes because I was wrapping for five hours. So this light is definitely helping me in more ways than just being a fantastic reading light. It's also, as I said, helping me with my crafting and just generally making my room feel really cozy and atmospheric. If you would like to check out anything about Serious Readers and the Serious Lights range, which I highly recommend you do, I will leave a link down below. You can also use my code BNS22 to get a free compact light with any purchase from the Serious Lights range. Thank you so much for supporting my ad and thank you Serious Readers for sponsoring this video.
it is Friday, it is after work, I am in a very good festive mood. I work the last part of my working day in a cafe in town, which I'm really starting to enjoy doing on a Friday as a little treat, it's just a really nice way to end the week. I also bought myself a couple of books that I'm going to show you in this video, and I got myself a Christmas jumper. I have been looking for a Christmas jumper that I like for about two years now, and I finally found one. So all that is very exciting, but I haven't opened my advent calendar yet, so I thought we could do that together. I always like to try and guess what is behind each door, so I am going to guess a little star today. Please leave your advent door guesses below. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. It's a little cup of hot chocolate. I love having picture advent calendars. I just think they're so cute. I do have a chocolate one as well, but every year my mom's always got me a little picture one. So it's really cute to open every day. Speaking of advent, one of the books I bought today, I got completely suckered in by the books that Waterstones offers you at the till point. And this was the one that I ended up buying. This is Advent Street by Carol Ann Duffy. I don't know if this is one big poem or lots of poems. I think it might be one big poem, but this is a little illustrated book. It's illustrated by Yelena Bryksenkova. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but this is a little advent card in a book almost. It has little pictures that look into the windows on this street. And I just think it's so lovely. This is so beautifully illustrated. And I just think it's gonna be a really beautiful little book. And it's just so lovely. It just makes me feel all festive just looking at it. This illustration style I think is really pretty. I love the fact that we have little advent doors in the cover. It's just so cute. I also picked up another book. So I was looking at the Waterstones winners of the year for the book of the year, the author of the year, and the middle grade or children's book of the year. I think the, the third category is classed as. And I decided to pick up Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is the author of the year. I thought it might be a kind of fun video at some point to read this and the children's book of the year because I already own that one. So I thought I would pick this up because, excuse me, look at those sprayed edges. They're so pretty. I love me a stencil design on the side of pages. This is definitely not something I would normally pick up and why I haven't picked it up so far, but literally everybody has told me how much they enjoyed this, even if it wasn't within their usual reading comfort zone. So. I thought I would give it a go. Obviously it's been very popular. Oh, I haven't looked under the dust jacket yet, hang on. It's so pretty. So, what is this book about? Let me tell you. Chemist Elizabeth Zott is not your average woman. In fact, Elizabeth Zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing. But it's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute take a very unscientific view of equality. Except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize nominated, grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind. True chemistry results. But like science, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years later, Elizabeth Zott finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking proves revolutionary, but as her following grows, not everyone is happy, because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook, she's daring them to change the status quo. Meet the unconventional, uncompromising Elizabeth Zott. I mean, really, it should be something that I'm interested in reading. I mean, I am obviously interested in reading, but it should have been something that I would have looked at before because everybody says how great of a feminist book this is and how fantastic a lead character Elizabeth Zott is. So I am really looking forward to reading this one now. It's meant to be quite fast paced as well, which is something that I was, I don't know, I was kind of daunted by it because I thought it would be slower, but the reviews say it's fast paced. The books that I was chatting to said it's fast paced. I just think the reviews speak so highly of it. It's laugh aloud, funny, witty, and provocative. I'm devastated to have finished it. I feel like when a book leaves you feeling like that, you know it's a good one. Sparks joy with every page, fast paced and unabashedly amusing, a future classic. I just think it sounds like it's gonna be really interesting, one of those books that probably stays with me and I thought I would pick it up. So I will be doing a video for this. I think I'm just gonna do the two fiction ones because I don't often sit down and read a non-fiction in enough time that I think I can make a video about it. I think it's just something I would dip in and out of over quite a long period of time. So if I do read that one, I don't think I'll include it in the vlog, but there will be a vlog coming. I feel like it's gonna be a fun time to do it. So I will be reading this one pretty soon and I'm looking forward to seeing what I think of it. I said I got a Christmas jumper. I need to show you because I'm so pleased with this jumper. I have a hideous jumper that is so itchy and so artificially feeling that every time I put it on, I just get way too hot and itchy and it's just, no. It's got a llama on the front of it. It says, fa la 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 llama. 
I don't know why it says that. I think I bought it many, 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 many years ago when I had to have a jumper on for some specific reason. But I've been looking for a nice one this year, one well, last year as well, and I didn't find anything last year. And I just happened upon this as I was leaving town today. We have this really lovely shop in my town that is made up of lots of independent sellers. It's like a real life Etsy. And they have always got so many nice new things coming in and just everything's changing all the time. And in their window, they had a Christmas jumper that I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I thought I'd go in and see if they had any more. And they did. So I managed to pick this one up and it's oversized, which I'm so happy about. It says merry and bright in this beautiful gold font. It has a little tree at the bottom. It's a forest green color, which is one of my favorite colors and one of my favorite colors to wear as well and it's oversized, so I love this. This is pretty much exactly what I wanted. So I'm very excited to wear this. I might wear this tomorrow, I haven't decided. I may wear it tomorrow. If I don't wear it tomorrow, I will certainly wear it at some other point during the week, because I want to get as much wear out of this as possible. Also, I picked myself up a little pair of earrings as well, because they were really cute and I couldn't not. They're little woolly hats, how cute are they? The little red and green hats and they match the jumper. So hang on, I'm gonna try them on and show you. They're so cute. Look at them. I love them. I love them very much. Hang on, can my little rabbit fit one on its head? Got this little rabbit. This is Peanut. Peanut sits on my bookshelves. Hang on, would it, would it fit? That's a little hat for Peanut. That's so cute. So just in case anyone was wondering, I have fully just thrown myself into Christmas mode now. I have my Christmas jumper, I have my Christmas earrings, got Christmassy books coming out my ears. I haven't really read much more of gifts yet. I'm not really getting into it yet. If I continue to not feel like this, I might pick something else up that I really do fancy because I don't want to feel like I'm slowing myself down when I always have so many books I want to read in December. I just always want to get to like everything festive and I feel like whilst, for example, I want to read all the horror in October, I feel like I can still read horror after October. Whereas December, I don't really feel like I can read Christmas books at any other time of the year. So I really want to get to as many of them as possible in this month. So I'm gonna go do a stream of some Pokemon now because I'm obsessed. <laughs> then I might do some Christmas wrapping because I haven't done that yet. If you watch my Christmas decorating video, I put in that that I was making my own wrapping paper and I've done the wrapping paper partially as much as I can do with the space I have available, but I haven't actually started wrapping yet and I would like to. Now I've got my tree up, I want to be able to actually put my presents under the tree and just know I've made a start because I think that wrapping, you always think in your head, that's fine, I'll watch a film and I'll be done by the end of the film. And then you realize just how long it takes to actually wrap presents. It takes ages, or it does for me anyway. I am aware that I am making way bigger a deal of wrapping presents than I need to and then being way too extra with it, but I really love doing it and it makes me happy. I just love Christmas. As you can probably tell from all the festive content and my general uplifted spirit at this time of year. I love summer, I love October, I love December for Christmas. Not such a big fan of the start of the year because it's just very gloomy, pretty cold, pretty miserable weather. We're not getting the peak through the sun yet, the heat isn't hitting yet, it's just meh. Whereas this time of year, at least whilst that is still the case with the weather, you've got Christmas to look forward to. So yeah, it's, it's just all go here with all the festive content. So I hope you're here for it. I'm so sorry if you are someone that doesn't like Christmas, but I'll go back to normal content in January. I'm gonna go now because apparently I just can't seem to stop talking, but I will speak to you at some other point. This is currently cupboard cam. Hello, <laughs> you're in a cupboard. It is Saturday morning. I'm just about to have breakfast and then I'm gonna leave to head to London. I'm getting the train in this morning. I normally drive into London, but honestly, I just can't be bothered. So <laughs> I'm getting the train, get to read on the train. I read a bit more of Gifts last night and I'm definitely getting a bit more into it and understanding the pattern but the fact that I think it says there's, is there 12? I think there's 12 characters getting thrown into this. I'm just a bit like okay I have to keep up. I have to know who is who but I just wanted to quickly drop by and say hello before I left and show you that I'm wearing my Christmas jumper. I just put a yellow shirt on underneath it but I love it. It's got a really nice fit to it because I can kind of tuck it under which is what I've done at the moment so it looks shorter or I can have it pulled down and be more oversized so I really like it and I think the colours go really well. Got the little earrings in, feeling very festive. Get ahead to London really soon. I hope you enjoy coming along with me on this festive day.
We're in Waterstones after hours. <laughs> We're not a ghost. Huh? It's very exciting. We, we went we went cocktail drinking and, and in Waterstones because yeah. we're bougie. Mm -hmm. And then the the shop is it shut? There's people here. I don't know. It's either nine or ten. It's I really quiet. It's very quiet. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel we we have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna now make my way home a lot later than than actually intended to, but it's been fun. It has been fun. I didn't expect this to be in London this way. No, it was good. All. Also, meet Kathleen. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and Jade. Jade, you know. <laughs> but it 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 wasn't as festive as I thought it would be. But it's still a fun day. I had a good day. Oh, a festive day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, I'm reading this at the moment. You are, yes. <laughs> This is the festive book pile. It's a bit out of the way, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah, Current like read, no. new purchase. Oh. I'm back from London. I did not anticipate getting back at half 12, but I'm back. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I got some books and I am excited to show you what they are, but I am doing that tomorrow because now I just, I need to get ready for bed. I need to sleep. I'm so tired, but I had a great day. It was so much fun with Jay and with Kathleen. I was just really sleepy. I'm gonna go ready for bed and I'll I'll haul tomorrow, I guess, Monday, I don't know. I'll I'll haul. The haul will be coming. Stay tuned for the haul. I've gotta go to bed now. Okay, it's Sunday. I've woken up and my body is sore and my brain hurts. <laughs> I have a headache. I think just because of how much we did yesterday and how much walking and I probably didn't drink enough water. But I woke up, I had a lie and I woke up at like 10.30. It's 11 now and I have got myself a treat bit of food and I thought I'd do a food haul because what's more thrilling than a food haul? I mean probably a book haul, which I'll also be doing, but I got some food. So I got myself some pan of chocolates for breakfast because it's needed. I know it's like 11 and all right, breakfast may be past now, but I, I got these. I'm not gonna lie, I thought these were giant and they're not, but that's fine. They're gonna be good. So I got those. I got myself some petit paninis, pet pan, pan, petit pans. They're, well, they're little, they're little rolls. I'm gonna cook them and have them. But um, I went bougie, okay? I know this is OTT, but I, I got some antipasto platter stuff, which is very fancy and top tier, god tier of a roast dinner. Not that I'm having a roast. This is a, this is not a roast, obviously. You know that. Um, but I got pigs and blankets because these are the best. These and Yorkshire puddings are the best things in a roast dinner. I love them. Possibly an unpopular opinion, but like I'm not a massive roast dinner fan. Like I love a roast, but I'm not like all about the roast life. However, these and Yorkshire puddings I will just devour. So I got some of these. This is all very bougie. This is definitely a treat lunch. I would not normally get all of this stuff. I also got some Pringles because yesterday in London I saw someone with Pringles and I haven't stopped thinking about it. So that's my food haul. Do you want a book haul? I think I've got a really shaky hand today. I don't know why I apologize, but I got five new books, which I'm kind of excited about. So I'm just gonna run through them quick. I got The Creeper from Food and Planet. I saw this in a couple of shops and I was like, I have to get this, this looks so cool. It's by A.M. Shine. And there's basically this creepy being who seems to be watching these people who are in this village to do a research trip. They're really excited they've been picked this research trip. And then they, they kind of realize that there's this superstition surrounding this village and that there's this, this creepy person. The way it was said in the line, uh, three times you see him each night he comes closer. I mean, I just feel like that's proper creepy, that he's a sinister figure. I mean, it sounds like it might creep me out. If you've been joining me for any of my horror book reading experiences, you'll know I'm trying to find a book that scares me. Could this one be that book? Then I also got the Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. Is it Sarah or Sarah if it doesn't have an H on it? Is it still Sarah? I need to check that. But again, Forbidden Planet, they had loads of discounts on their hardbacks. This one is a book about books, and we know I love a book about books. Um, so here, here's the blurb, or you can Google it as well, but I'll try and summarize it, because I'm so good at doing that. This follows a rare book dealer who gets hired to find this 17th century manual that is meant to be a really powerful occult book. And she basically embarks on this journey. It features New Orleans, which is something else I love reading about in books. And she realizes that this book could actually help her find some answers as well. Um, so it's it's a dramatic 
dangerous search for this book. Love the cover of this as well. Very pretty. Last book I got in Forbidden Planet is Things Have Gotten Last Since... Uh, wait, no, no, it's not. Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca. I think this is like three short stories. I don't know if they knit together or not, but it says it's three devastatingly beautifully written horror stories from one of the genre's most cutting edge voices. And then it says, what have you done today to deserve your eyes? Which is kind of creeping me out uh, because I haven't really done much today, to be honest. So... <laughs> Maybe I should do more, but it looks good if it's gonna focus. There we go. There's three different short stories They all seem to be pretty interesting. I Especially enjoy the isolated couple with the mysterious man knocking on the door during a storm I feel like that could be creepy But what actually mainly sold this to me was the format. It looks a little bit mixed media -y. Of course, I flicked to a page that is completely normal in format. Okay, come on. Don't let me down a slight mixed media format it, it looks like it, it could be interesting. I don't know. It, it intrigued me, see? It's like timestamps of conversations. I don't know if it's like emails or texts or something. I think messenger messages. So yeah, I thought that one looked cool. Also, I've heard about this one a couple of times, so I thought I would check it out for myself. Then I got 13 Stories by Jonathan Sims. First picked this one up and was like, there's a typo on this book. I mean, I know it's obviously deliberate, but I thought this was 13 short stories. And then I realized it was playing on the stories of a building hence the, the buttons here. But this is about some people that are brought to a dinner party. They don't know each other. I don't think they even know the host actually. And they have been invited to this dinner party and they don't know why. And then I think somebody dies. By the end of their night, the host is dead and none of the guests say, will say what, would hap what had happened. His death has remained one of the biggest unsolved mysteries until now, but are you ready for their stories? So I think that the host is like a billionaire guy and they're all at his home. Maybe. I don't know, but it looks good. Maybe maybe a bit gory, that would imply. But I think it looks cool. And then this last one Jade was telling me about, and I thought this sounded really cool. So I got this. This is Hummingbird Salamander by Jeff Vandermeer. Now, I'm going to do a very poor job of explaining this, I feel. A woman receives a envelope with a key in it to a storage unit that has a taxidermy hummingbird in it. And there's a letter within this from a dead woman who basically sets in a series of motions for the woman that's found this key that spiral out of control. I <laughs> spiraled the camera then. I don't really know, but her family get into danger and she's trying to follow in the dead woman's footsteps to find out what the hell is happening. I don't I don't really know. That was probably a really bad description, but it looks really cool. There's the blurb if you do want to read it. This is another climate change identity book. I got one recently and I can't remember what it was, but what was it? Oh, I can't remember which one it was, but I am seeing more and more of these pop up, which I think is good because I think it's definitely something that needs to be talked about in every form of media because it is happening, it is real, we cannot ignore it. But I'm really glad I got the hardback for this because the paperback, which I did initially pick up, was it had fluorescent pink and fluorescent green on the cover and it was just hurting my eyes if I'm honest. This one is, I much prefer, it's much less offensive on my eyes and I quite like it actually, it's quite quite sleek. So that was the shittest run through ever of a book haul, <laughs> but I got some books. Here they are. I got some food, you got a food haul. It is Sunday, I have not had a day off for the longest time, so what I'm gonna do is have a day off. I, as I said, have ordered my food. I don't have to go out. It's pretty grim outside anyway. My body is achy. I'm gonna just watch Christmas films on TV, maybe some Vlogmasy videos if anyone's doing Vlogmas, and I think I'm gonna wrap some presents because I haven't done that yet. And it's gonna be great. And I'm so excited. I, I, I just, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed yesterday. I don't really know what that footage turned out like, but I did get some books, so happy days. It was really fun to see Jade. It was really fun to see Kath. It was just a really great time and definitely feel very full and happy from everything that we did yesterday. So, got books, got food, gonna go enjoy the food now and wrap some presents. I'm using a candle as a tripod, this is very impractical. <laughs> I have to like crouch to get into the camera shot. But I finished Gifts by Laura Barnett and I gave it three out of five stars. I feel like it could have been lower than that. I initially looked at this and thought, is it short stories? And then I thought, no, they're all gonna link together. It's not short stories, it's one novel. And it is one novel but they only link to the previous story. So there's 12 people and each person is trying to buy a gift for someone for Christmas. And in each individual story, you meet the next person that you're going to get the story of, which is clever, 
but I'm not a big fan of short stories because they never give me enough time to get into the character's story and to understand what we're meant to be feeling for them and that for me made this feel like a bit of a hike to be able to get into this book so whilst I can see that if you like this kind of thing this will probably be for you it just didn't work for me unfortunately and I just didn't enjoy it and I found it a bit of a slog to get through but I have now finished it so yay I can read another Christmassy book I haven't decided what that is yet but when I do I will let you know I got some book mail that I really want to share with you oh I haven't done the book mail song in ages hang on but my book, my book, my book, my book came in the mail. Hey, this has been sent by Carmen, who has left an absolutely lovely note in this book. Thank you so much, Carmen. This is so kind of you. So Carmen has sent me The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. This follows a woman who is pregnant and widowed, and she is sent to a fairly isolated setting, of course, to see out her pregnancy. And she thinks she's pretty much alone there until there's this creepy mysterious wooden figure it's described as a silent companion that bears an unsettling resemblance to the main character it sounds like it's going to be a really good gothic story it sounds very very atmospheric and i've heard good things about this this came as a recommendation when i was looking for creepy atmospheric gothic books thank you so much carmen for sending this my way you are very 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 kind hello it is tuesday yeah, Tuesday. I don't know when I'm ending this vlog. <laughs> it's just ongoing. So we're gonna keep going because I'm having fun and I'm reading Christmas books. So I'm currently reading Death and Papa Noel by Ian Moore. I started this last night. This is teeny, so I'm probably gonna finish this maybe tonight, hopefully tonight. I'm getting on a train tomorrow actually, so definitely tonight because I don't wanna bring this with me because it's, I'm gonna finish it like immediately as soon as I get on the train. But this follows a detective who's been invited to a murder mystery night and he doesn't wanna go. I think someone's gonna die in real life rather than it just being a game because the bottom line is, but is it really a game to everyone? So I'm expecting some Christmas drama, some murder mystery drama, some, some fun Christmas drama, hopefully. I still feel really disappointed by gifts. I can totally see why people would like it, but it wasn't the one for me. Also, interestingly, it mentioned COVID a lot, but it didn't call it COVID. It just was like saying the virus and the pandemic. And I think that might be one of the first books I've read that mentions COVID, which is weird. I don't think I want to read about it. Like it was such a shitty time. I wanted to just stay like where it was. I don't need it to be repeated in fiction for years to come. So yeah, that's, that's a thing that was mentioned in that book that I forgot to talk about yesterday. I'm in London tomorrow again, <laughs> I was in London on Saturday. I'm ready to have a little bit of a break soon. I'm very ready for the Christmas time off, but I, yeah, was in, I'm in London tomorrow because I'm going to an event that I am making a video for. So that will be coming or will already be arriving. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the date is today. I don't know when this is going live. There's lots of Christmas content coming your way, basically, including a London vlog tomorrow that I'm filming tomorrow and will be live at some point. The God, this is just a mess, but yes, <laughs> there will be something. I am going to be streaming later today because Disney, 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 Dreamlight Valley has got its update out and I'm so excited. So I can play the Toy Story characters I think it is now, which is exciting. So I'm gonna be streaming that later. I was going out for dinner tonight, but my plans have changed a little bit. So I'm gonna stay in and stream instead. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking at hundred miles a minute. There's no reason for me to be, but <sighs> hey, <laughs> welcome to Tuesday on this never ending vlog. Hello, it's Thursday. I can't remember when I last spoke to you and what the update was when I did, but I feel like I should probably wrap this vlog up here because I don't even know when I started at this point. So <laughs> gonna wrap this up here, but I have a couple of reading updates before I do. So I ended up, I, did I tell you I'd started this? I ended up finishing this on Tuesday night. So I pretty much read it in one sitting in the evening because I only read about 10 pages the night before. To be honest, this was 0% festive. I mean, I'm all right, it was 5% festive. The start of this, featured the introduction of the murder mystery game and this game is taking place I think it was on Christmas Eve or over the Christmas period and we see the main detective guy dress up as Father Christmas very briefly and then it's pretty much just a normal game and there's no Christmassy theme to it which is why I wanted to read it so I I found it a little bit disappointing the end felt quite disjointed and it kind of just randomly jumped in all these different directions. I think I gave it three out of five. I don't know. It's really hard with short stories to get into them and I completely acknowledge this and I know I voluntarily bought a short story, but I really thought it would be festive. The cover, 
it's so festive. I love the cover, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the one, unfortunately. So I was on a train yesterday and I was finishing a book on the train, but I also knew I needed to bring another book with me. So I brought with me Murder on the Christmas Express by Alexandra Benedict. This is the book that I didn't realise I was buying from the same author that I had read a book and not loved from. So I am dubious towards this one. However, I read quite a decent amount of it on the train. I'm up to page 74 and that was reading it from a little bit of my journey into London yesterday and then all my journey back. I'm I'm not disliking this yet. The writing style is certainly not particularly intricately woven, but it's just a fun, simple kind of book. And I think sometimes that's fine. And especially at this time of year when I have a million and one things going on, this kind of thing is just like an easy break for me to read. I like the fact that we have the Christmas element to it for sure like everyone's trying to get home for Christmas. I like the fact that we have the murder on this train and it's got murder on the Orient Express vibes and it has mentioned that someone is reading murder on the Orient Express on this train so I like the fact that it has actually acknowledged that. So I like all of these things. I'll see how I go. I'll see how it goes. I, I'll probably end up finishing it because I want to know who who done it. I don't know if it's that I don't like the author's writing style as such or that it's ju it just feels like very simply written whereas it could go into a little bit more detail and go in a slightly different way but that's fine I'm reading it because it's easy and fun hopefully. <laughs> so this is what I'm currently reading but I am going to write this vlog up here because otherwise I'm just never going to end it and then it's going to be a very 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 long never-ending vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you are reading any festive reads or if you've got any festive or wintry book recommendations. I have got five books left before I hit 100 books read for the year and I'd love to be able to try and achieve that. I, I don't know if it's doable or not because again, very busy at the moment, but I would love to try and achieve it. So five books left, exciting. Anyway, subscribe to see more of my face on your feed and you can also find a link down below to my Patreon where I do lots of extra content. It's a fun place to be, especially at this time of year. We have a Patreon Christmas party, which I'm very excited about. And you can also find a link back down below to my Lightroom presets. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.